Live from the AOK Production House, Studio Number Two. I'm Nico Kelly, and I'm Derek Deasy. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted to sound like a news anchor. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty good. It's where the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Uh, Derek, we have a very special guest this evening, as we often do on Sunday nights. Uh huh. James Lee Baker, all the way from Denver, Colorado. Although I think you're in Texas tonight. James, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so I, I'm looking at your bio here. Classically trained musician, which always seems to be the best way to get started. Uh, lots of uh, uh, influences from singer-songwriters. Um, I, 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 if When I first saw your press release, I thought it was kind of a, a country thing. The more I listened to it, the more I think that may not be the case. So... Uh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Who's James Lee Baker, and what's your music all about? How'd you get into it? Introduce yourself to our audience. <laughs> oh, sure. That's a lot, lot, lot of things to talk about. Uh, I guess uh, we can break it down one by I, one. I was, <laughs> yeah, so I was born and raised in Texas, and uh, spent most of my life there. Um, and raised in a musical family all the people in my in my family are musical uh and so music was a big part of my life growing up and uh, i was taught music theory and, and performance at a young age through you know summer camps and church and that sort of thing so it was uh it was musical all through school and in middle school and high school did choirs and vocal competitions and voice lessons and and so it was, it was a big part of my life. I, I decided to major in vocal performance at Emerald College and I did two years there before I switched majors and went into technology, but uh, still got about two years of formal training. And, and I started doing the songwriting thing probably when I was about 16. Mm-hmm. I got a guitar for, for, you know, for my birthday and uh, really wanted to explore it. I had already been writing poetry and that sort of thing. So, it was just something natural that came to me and something that I, I find fulfilling. Hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I saw that you um, were trained briefly by a fingerstyle guitar player. So did you start out originally on guitar? Is that your muse? Do you play other instruments? My primary instrument is voice. Um, oh, okay, that's cool. I, I was a yeah. singer. Um, I... I I played acoustic for just a few years. wasn't extremely good at it, um, <laughs> but I, I, I shadowed under the, you know, the the techniques uh, that I've learned fr- from various artists, and sort of picked up folk music because it was easy to do on an acoustic guitar. Um, but I, I I bumped into this guy Rich Gillowitz. I don't know how I ended up going, but he was passing through my hometown. And he was doing a a, a show uh, at like a like a music store, uh-huh. and uh, we I went to the music store. I heard this guy play. My mind is blown, huh. and I think I want like a giant TV banner to go in my bedroom or something. So uh, <laughs> from, from a, from a raffle, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, years later I, I just you know was curious to find out what that musician's name was because I had forgotten it and. I looked him up, I discovered him, and, and then I just discovered what he had been doing. And he was sort of this gateway drug for all of these neoclassical guitar players that I had discovered through his music. Artists like Michael Hedges, Leo Kotke, um, John Renborn, uh, and Gove Scrivener, etc. Mm. And so I, I discovered all of these artists because of him and just immersed myself in their techniques and at a certain point, I asked. I saw that he was offering lessons and asked to reach out, and, and he basically did like phone and Skype consultations, uh, just going over technique and helping me address any concerns or questions I had. It was it was somewhat helpful, but it was more like, more helpful of like you know pushing me to get through difficult pieces and that sort of sort of thing. So I learned probably two dozen you know classically classical pieces and various tunings and techniques. And that really helped me become, you know, comfortable with finger style guitar. And now, the sort of finger style guitar playing that I do on my music um, is 
for me is quite easy in comparison to some of these more difficult things. So it was a great way to master that. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, it's pretty cool. And I, I, my, my question to you is how do you, um, um, What's the word? How do you categorize your music? Folk? Americana? Country? Yeah, I've had this problem. This has been a problem myself, you know, um, mm-hmm. because I, I, I listened to a lot of folk artists, and I was trying to get into the folk community, mm-hmm. but uh, I had too much... Um, it had too much baggage, and I don't think it was a, a bad baggage. I think it was great baggage, but mm-hmm. it's still baggage from <laughs> all of the years of listening to country music and loving, you know, classic rock. And I was steeped in classic rock, and uh-huh. I know classic rock more than most people my age, just because my dad would, you know, force us to listen to Steely Dan and Rush and the Eagles and all these artists in the car when we were traveling around, you know, the, the tri-state area doing church-related stuff because mm. he, he was a preacher. So we were always traveling and listening to classic rock. So, so they're steeped in that stuff. And, um, yeah, so I, I think it all just kind of, it took a while to wash that off of me. Um, I'd, I'd say I'm trying to be a folk artist, but at least the, this last project is pretty Americana country flavored. Mm. Um, and that was on purpose. I, I, I had moved back to Texas, bought a house, spend more time with my family. And I, I do still go between the house there and where I live in Denver. Mm. So it's a little complicated, but when I came back, uh, this was two years ago, I, I was writing this album and I asked my sister-in-law, what do you think I should do? She said, well, you're home again. So why don't you just call it home again? So oh, the, well, the album, the album is called Home Again, and, and it's intentionally like country flavored mm-hmm. um, because of you know where we live. Okay. Um, but this next project that I'll be working on, which I'll be starting in January, I've got six or seven songs written right now. I hope to f- write another four or five and have the album out by January of 2020. That's going to be strictly folk. It might be a, it, it might have some pop formula to it but it's going to be stripped down it's going to be you know delicate record delicately recorded by a, a folk engineer and the folk community so, so that's where i'm headed i'm headed into the folk community hmm. so you live uh you have uh, residences i should say in in denver and uh are you in central texas or what no in uh the panhandle amarillo mm-hmm. oh very cool amarillo Hey, I, uh, that's funny. I One of my favorite songs off of that uh, Gorillaz album that they did, um, that he did all on his iPad, uh, I can't even think of the name of it. It's called Amarillo. Oh. <laughs> anyway. That's totally oh. related <laughs> Completely to random. Uh, folk music I've never in met general. Anybody, I've yeah, never no, met anybody good. living in uh, Amarillo. <laughs> What's it like there? Do you, do you like it? Uh, yeah. I mean, like all places, it has its drawbacks, but I, I think, you know, it's... Um, it's laid back. The people here, it's a, it's a very small town feel. Um, mm. uh, lots of good things to do. You know, um, is everything closed I, I by 8 p.m.? Po- positive way to say it. What's that? Is everything closed by 8 p.m.? Yeah. Liquor <laughs> stores are closed by 9 and Oof. they're closed on Sundays. Oh, um, everything's closed on Sundays. You know, it's, uh, it, it is a conservative community for sure. <laughs> and the, um, and then, you know, there's not a lot to do, you know, down here. You, if you're not going to the canyon uh, or going to the amusement park, uh, you're going to basically go to a restaurant. <laughs> That's pretty much, <laughs> um, you know, there's other things to do, but like museums and stuff. But, uh, Amarillo. Uh, it's, it's just not as stimulating as larger metro areas. Hmm. Amarillo is on my mind. George Strait, great song. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, hey, try to bring that full circle. Yeah. Did you just Google search that? I couldn't remember. I, I couldn't uh, remember if it was George Strait or. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I love this the guy. song. I was oh, whatever. Make, I didn't She's trying get the to guy relate. <laughs> you hear this guy. Yeah, no, oh, I just goodness. wanted to make sure I remembered the name of the artist correctly. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know what George Strait is. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's that like flying back between. Uh, Den- I, I've got no real understanding in the Midwest. <laughs> is, that a long, is that a long flight between Denver and. Because uh, you're crossing time zones, I think, right? Yeah, it, it, from Denver to Amarillo is about an hour flight. It's a direct wow. flight, 
uh, and it changes yeah, time zones. So I'm flying there tomorrow morning, and I will arrive at the same time that I left <laughs> on my clock. Nice. So it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, you don't lose any time to fly. Yeah, I like that. There you go. That's great. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. You released a EP in uh, March called "The Canadian River." Now you're going to call something "The Canadian River." There's got to be a story behind this. Yes, because you... Nick was trying to explain it to me. <laughs> I told Derek, and he's that like, I thought... "Yeah, I asked him if he was Canadian," and I'm like, "Well, yeah." <laughs> I, 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 I thought because we have we, we talked to a lot of uh, the MTS uh, um, uh, management group. There are a lot of their artists are. From Canada. Yeah, it um, just so happens. It's funny, the other guy that I thought lived in Canada was also from Denver. Yeah. So I've made this mistake twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so tell me about this Canadian River. Did you spend time in Canada? Did you, is, does it sound cool to you or what? <laughs> well, it's called the Canadian River because the Canadian River is a tributary river of the Arkansas River, and and it runs through the, the Texas Panhandle, oh, okay. as well as in through next New Mexico and Oklahoma. Uh, it's about 45 minutes north of Amarillo, and a place I was, I've visited many times in my uh, my youth and adult life. Uh, it's a place people go for off roading and for you know um, tailgate camping and that sort of thing. So. Um, I I wrote a song about that place because I I wanted to uh, start exploring the area in my songwriting, um, you know, my surroundings, and that that was one of the first things that came to mind was the red clay uh, of the river, and I, I sort of just in in the process of doing some exploration, I touched on uh, a subject in my free writing, uh, said something like the river is my church, and I sort of center the song around that line so the song itself is about one's personal um journey with their you know religion or faith in, in today's modern world you, see, you know i i, I talked we talked before the uh, before the show a couple hours ago and um when i first saw your name come through our email on the press release i just youtubed you I, that's that's what i normally do first you know just to see what's out there and uh i ran across this song that i loved and that's why i actually um emailed michael originally it was called returning to paris and uh i i love that the, the your songs really seem to kind of have a, a story kind of behind them if it seems like an emotional connection for you anyway you were explaining to me the story and i thought Derek would enjoy it so yeah <laughs> now tell us about this song and, and and the story behind it because I think it's not quite recorded yet, right? So, go. <laughs> yes, so, thank you. So uh, yeah, I I haven't released it yet. Um, and the recording that I did, I did as a one take with a with an ear trumpet microphone, which is a great omnidirectional microphone for live performances. So mm. uh, I, I recorded that in my home and just use it as a reference and a demo for for contests and, and feedback and critiques. Um, but the song itself is is partially based in truth, as most songs are that I write. I, I sort of weave in some truths and then fill it in with, with fantasy because, you know, sometimes li- li- there's poet, the, the poetry in life could, could be more amplified. So... Uh, my wife and I went to um, Paris a few years ago, and when we got in in the evening after we had dinner, uh-huh. we took a, a night walk down to the Eiffel Tower, which was lit up at the time. We lay down in the uh, the grass on the Champ de Mars, and, and right at the feet of the Eiffel Tower, and um, had cigarillos and, uh, and 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 French uh, cognac and. And then we walked across the, the the bridges on the Seine River, and um, so I wanted to I wanted to share that experience uh, in my song. And I had this epiphany that it, what if you what if you go back to Paris just for the purpose of breaking up? Um, so <laughs> that's sort of how this song was formed. Yeah. Um. Do you- like I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of that logistically, know, honey. Gonna... Let's get let's get some plane tickets. I want to sh- I want to take you to Paris. Okay, I'm gonna tell we you. get there. Listen, it's not working out. That, it's over, J- James. That, that's a heck of imagination. <laughs> let me tell you that. Yeah. Uh, but what a great like I I heard when he told me this earlier. I said we got to tell Derek this because yeah. 
uh, what a crazy way to come up with a song. I mean, not crazy, but what a cool way, I yeah, should say, yeah, to come yeah. up with a song. I, I think it's really neat. So, ha- okay. Does your wife know what this is about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, it's actually her favorite song. Oh, well. okay. Well, mine too. Um, yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> Yeah. The, the 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 thing is the way I set it up. In I thought you actually is, broke up with it. To be honest, couple, the couple. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but the way, I set, the way I set it up is the couple goes to Paris when they go to Paris. You know, ten years ago, mm. they made two promises. So it sort of implies that, like, the first promise was the promise to be married or, or be together, and the the second promise was that if things didn't work out that we would come back here so mm-hmm. obviously they're there because it hasn't worked out they're reminiscing about what happened when they came there the first time mm-hmm. and they're they're they parting ways yeah man there you go Derek. I, I know there's a new approach for you there you go if i'm gonna get a divorce <laughs> i'm gonna pick a very good location to do it thank you i really appreciate the advice <laughs> this is gonna be good <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's, he's probably gonna, he's gonna he's gonna actually go home and write a divorce song. Yeah, that, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. <laughs> no, um, uh, James, because this is a, a, a relatively unreleased. I mean, it is on YouTube, but uh, a relatively unreleased song. I'd like to play both of your songs and have you tell us about the other one as well. If, but do you mind if we play this? Because I, I I tell you, I love this song. I, when I heard it, I was like, man, this is great. Uh, do you mind that we play it? Sure, go for it. All right, great. Well, let's uh, let's take a listen. Uh-huh. When we come back, I want to ask uh, James his thoughts on Paris in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Nick has some interesting tidbits from when he lived I over do. there. Yeah. I do. That was one, that was one thing about Fantastic Beasts. They they made fun of a lot of uh, of Paris. But anyway, okay, uh, okay. Uh, that's beside the point. We are you're listening to, to the Echo Radio. You are, uh, and we are talking to James Lee Baker, singer songwriter. Uh, go check him out if you haven't heard of him that's why you're listening to this show right because right. you want to hear some new indie artists and this is um his uh, demo mp3 whatever you want to call it returning to paris let's take a listen and then uh, we'll talk about it the wheels touch down in We've returned to Paris one last time It's been ten years to hell and through Since our white and red-eyed rendezvous We were so impulsive then And bright of no regret, no Content. Two vows made, one just in case. If things went south, we'd come back to this place. There are young lovers here who know not what. There's a hunger in their eyes It reminds me of you and I We have come to the city of love To say goodbye And for so This day would never arrive Ain't it funny looking up at all these lights While ours is going out on the Champ de Mars and the dying grass underneath the stars The clock strikes twelve the bell it tolls 
as the Eiffel Tower glints and glows. We booked flights on separate planes through our wedding rings into the same. Cut our lock off the palm desire, then we said our Walking back to my room, I tried not to picture you. Crossing bridges all alone, I'm certain when this all went wrong. We have come to the city of love to say goodbye and for so long I believe this day will never arrive ain't it funny looking up at all these lights while our Well, I'll tell you, uh, that's James Lee uh, Baker with Returning to Paris. And I, I have to say, as a song f- about your wife, uh, it's beautiful. Yes. As a breakup song, <laughs> <laughs> it really takes on a different uh, a different personality, I think. <laughs> uh, but it's a beautiful song. I really love it. I, I, I was uh, telling Derek, I, I listened to your... Um, your your press kit and there's several songs in there that I liked. Uh, in fact, the the one you sent me I really thought was great as well. That we'll take a listen to here in a few minutes. But uh, this one just caught me when I when I was watching. I was like, ah, that's that's a really cool song. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. Good job. Yeah, it's good live performance <laughs> yeah. and everything. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, we we were we were wondering what mic did you say you were using. Uh, it's the company called Ear Trumpets. They're yes. based out of, uh, I think they're based out of Seattle. Huh. Either out of, no, we're Portland. Uh, one of the two. Um, and they they have they do they make handmade uh, sort of steampunk looking retro microphones. Um, very high quality stuff, and they're they have custom uh, like a, each they, each series is, is designed for different uh live performances for the most part so mm-hmm. they're not really something you'd use like in a in a studio as much as you'd use uh on a stage with three unplugged musicians playing mm-hmm. at the same time that sort of thing yeah interesting mm-hmm. yeah it's a cool looking mic on the uh, i assume that's the one that's on the video is that right mm-hmm. yeah, yeah cool so what were your thoughts of paris when you left uh, the, uh, well, can I say bad words on here? Yeah, it's the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Have fun. <laughs> uh, I love when people ask. I that. just the one. I think the one lesson that I learned from Paris was that, you know, going in, I people are telling me, you know, the French are going to be assholes, you know, to Americans. Yeah, yeah. You need to learn a little bit of French. And when I got there, I I realized when I left that it was the Americans that were the assholes. <laughs> oh. I'm sure that's true so, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it goes both ways. I've yeah. definitely had my fair share of French assholes <laughs> in my life. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Oh, big yeah. time, me man. Too. They talk down and <laughs> snooty to me. I'm a I'm a pretty passive aggressive. No, no, I'm pretty. I'm, <laughs> no, I consider. As he gets angry, uh, yeah, as I get angry, up. I'll kick the ass. He's ready. No, I, generally, when I meet the uh, you know meet anybody for friends, I always I try to be very nice. Like you know, first impressions are very important when I meet somebody. So I. I I try to be as polite as possible, but I find, on average, I usually I I feel like I'm being talked down to, and when somebody talks down to me, then I'm gonna come at you. Yeah, 
Um, not physically and not vocally. <laughs> I'm still going to be nice to you, but uh, I'm going to, in my head, think you're a douchebag, yeah. and I'm going to yeah. bash you on my radio show. And here we are. So, Doing just that. Yeah, so there you go, with French people. With someone that did not think we were going to be bashing French people while yeah. we were interviewing yeah. him. Yeah, so I, and, and not that you're saying it's okay. Oh. He's yeah. not associated with this this mindset. I speak for myself. Yeah. He was saying yeah. we're assholes, Americans. Yeah. So, okay, continue. Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, I, lived no. Over, I, I lived over in Germany for two years, and uh, I, I think uh, Germany kind of set the bar high a little bit in terms of just... Um, uh, cleanliness and uh you know the street people and things so I-, I was surprised when i went to paris you know i was expecting it to be a little different it was also bad weather while i was there mm. <laughs> we went to go to, to disney paris and then we went into the city and i noticed that the closer we got to the city from uh the disney you know bubble it was um a little sketchier as we went so <laughs> uh yeah, so I just always like hearing people talk about it. Yeah, so so uh, well, continue on your thoughts. Yeah. So the Americans are the assholes. <laughs> let's stick. Let's start well, there. Derek, I, I think it just. I think what it did was it maybe you know maybe I think we're both we both you know have different experiences and and I think maybe if I went back I might have similar experiences to to yours. I think the thing that I saw while being around American tourists was. I, I begin to see how how American tourists can can be. You know, yeah. we're we're um, we're very we're the I don't know we're the the guy the asshole that drives the Lamborghini. Yeah, you yeah. Know, in the world, I guess. And yeah. so so I saw I saw I see people you know, you know complaining or raising a fuss or you know just different things. And it was that was just it's not something that I see. You see, I think it's just that I'm used to seeing it in everyday life, yeah. and yeah. then in that, in, in a different environment, you see that they, were, you know, how other people respond to that, or mainly how other people aren't. People, people there are a lot more laid back, mm. you know, and easygoing. Um, they, you know, I, I, I would get a stiff nosed waitress or waiter from time to time, mm. um, but I found if I just spoke in French. Uh, oh. Even if it was broken, and sh- showed that I was at least halfway interested in meeting him in the conversation, and things worked a little bit better. Yeah, and uh, I can echo that as well. Oh. I, I had similar experiences as well. Just um, you know, I I've never been to France, but I am I well, am, I am go. appalled if they don't know English. <laughs> this I is know. My, haven't they understand by now? English is the dominant language. People, no, that's learn uh, it. No, but that's true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true all over Europe. That yeah, yeah, uh, no. you can tell that I'm, people go over and don't don't try. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, tried to learn German. I, I was relatively successful. Um, and, and and you can see the people that don't. Yeah. And definitely yeah. can understand why. Yeah, yeah. You know that. But did you? You did put your lock on the bridge. Is that right? No, we oh. did, we didn't go to the. We were going to the Pont des Arts to do that, but they had just put up the glass panels that yeah. prevented people from putting locks up. Oh. So. Just break the glass. I don't, <laughs> what's the problem? <laughs> we're Americans. <laughs> no, right? We they wouldn't be there if it wasn't yeah. for us. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Then I, then I could write a second song called there you "Arrested go. in Paris." Yeah, well, oh, hey, God, yes, I, and I think that would be a country song, James. If we, if you're going to leave here with any requests from us, please write <laughs> write a, a that sequel, write that song called "Arrested in Paris." You, hey, it, use that imagination, just, buddy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I would like to hear "Arrested in Paris." I that am would be so great. ready <laughs> to hear that. It's going to be the sequel. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Yeah, yeah, it'll be better than Elton John's <laughs> Captain Fantastic sequel. It's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, I did notice that on your bio as well. It mentioned several places that you've had the chance to play, including in Los Angeles and Boulder. So my question, Fox Theater in Boulder, actually, that's pretty cool. Uh, what's your been your favorite place to play? How did how did you get to play at some of these places, um, like Los Angeles? Uh, and uh, what's been your favorite? Well, um, the Whiskey A Go Go was a, was sort of um, more. It was a pay to play, and so I. I played. I paid to play there because, uh, and everybody pays to play there, with the exception of headliners. Um, yeah. Just because you know, I just it, it's nostalgic. You know, some of the best bands in the world that I listen to, 
you know, started on that stage. And so to be up there and play a set with their fantastic sound system and crew and all that, it was worth, worth, you know, the hundred bucks or whatever I had to pay to, to do it. So, yeah. Uh, that that was that was just great to fly into Hollywood, spend a weekend with some friends, have some drinks, and and then go. We both went to go play at the the Whiskey and Go Go. So, but as far as like a real show, a show where I'm getting paid uh, to date, um, I'd say you know um, it's been at um, listening room shows. So there's two shows that I've done uh, in the last year and a half that have been really um, really fantastic. Um, I, I did a show at the uh, at Swallow Hill uh, in Denver, Colorado. And that's a, that's sort of a folk roots uh, venue, and uh, I get to share the stage with Elvis Paul, who's a well-known folk singer. And we had I know, we probably had 125 people in that place, but all of them were pin drop quiet, and it was a really good crowd, and it was a great performance. Uh, and then I, I did a house concert in Denver well and I, I think there was like 70 people in a, in a one bedroom condo so they were all stuffed into this condo and w- when I'd start playing it was, it was very quiet so I was really close to them it was an intimate performance and they paid really well so hmm. um, those, I think those two shows and they're very very contrasted and one was more formal a formal venue with a stage and the other was you know more of a corner in an apartment kind of thing so um, I don't know, just the, those are my favorites so far. Well, very cool. Now, uh, because that other song was uh, your demo, I thought we would also play a song off your an actual album or project that you've done. Um, you uh, recommended um, uh, Disappearing for the Weekend, or Disappear for the Weekend. Um, so set this up for us. If you, don't, if you don't mind, we'd like to play that as well. Uh, what's this song off of? What's it about? Um, and this is off of my uh, LP, Home Again, which came out in December. This song is, um, again, the parts of truth of the song. My wife and I lived in California for about three years, uh, and we lived in, in the Bay Area. And so uh, that's where you get a lot of California references in the song. Mm-hmm. Um, but the song is just about just getting, you know, just disappearing for the weekend, just going going to wherever and and not really caring where you go, just say, let's pick a place and let's just go and let's be together. And that's, that's really the, the meat of the song. Um, and it's something that, that we still do a lot of, you know, I think cool. we can all relate to it. Yeah, I do it no, too. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we disappear to Disney. No. Okay. Um, well, uh, James, let's, uh, we're going to play. Is that okay? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, great. Uh, so once again, to the echo radio show, uh, I'm Nick O'Kelly. Derek Daisy, we're yeah. talking to James Lee Baker. This is his song, Disappear for the Le- uh, Weekend. Let's take a listen. Let's disappear 
And that's James Lee Baker disappear for the weekend. James, I'm telling you, I think you really got a, a good thing going here. Yeah. Derek and I were just talking that this really is. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not country. Like I, that song doesn't remind me of country. No, I'm like, no, nah, that doesn't really lend itself country. Like maybe a little bit with the electric guitar with the scale uh, that you're playing in. But uh, I was like, outside of that, I'm like, yeah. I, like if I listen to that, I wouldn't Im- immediately think that's a country song. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good song. It's a good song. Yeah, we're I not. I don't mean that no, in a bad way. Uh, it's I just a great mean song. I'm like I'm trying to. I'm trying to find that category. Yeah, I really am. <laughs> I'm I like, am. which which one is it? Yeah, yeah. you you uh, your voice too reminds us of uh, Ellis Paul. I don't know if you know that name at all, but uh, he sang songs in a lot of the Farley Brothers movies. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting here thinking, is that that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I I I really like your music. I like where you're going. And my question to you is. Uh, What's next for you? How are you promoting yourself right now? Uh, what's coming up next? Where can the audience get your music? Oh, well, uh, I'm in the writing stage right now. I'm working on the next project. I'm trying to book shows. Uh, we got a few things lined up, but um, mostly going to be heads down on the recording and writing process. Um, I'm going to, um, let's see, in, in January, I'm going to Austin. I'm going to a studio called Blue Rock Studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, cool. And we'll be working with Billy Crockett there and his team and Chris Bell, who's a producer for the Eagles and Don Henley and uh, a few other really established bands. So he's, um, he, I'm going to be working with him to produce a couple of songs um, just to see if it's a good fit for the album. And, uh, and then in March, going to New York for a session with the, with least of all vinyl, doing some like direct to lave vinyl sessions mm-hmm. and re- recording uh, individual songs for folks, um, that order vinyl. So we'll be doing that. And then I'm going to Montreal in February for the Folk Alliance International Conference. So that's that's mostly what I've got planned in the next few months. That sounds like a lot. Yeah. Were you were you getting requests for the vinyl? That's something that you just decided you wanted to do. I love vinyl, by the way. I uh, we Derek and I recently went to the Goo Goo Dolls 20th anniversary of Dizzy Up the Girl, and I bought. They did a, a re a re uh, or an, a issue, cut. an issue of yeah an uh, issue uh, of it on vinyl. Yeah. Uh, I, I I love that people are starting to rediscover vinyl. Um, so is that, is that just a, a favorite of yours? People were saying, Hey, get me this on vinyl. How did that happen? No, I, uh, I applied, uh, just was curious. Um, there's an opportunity on reverb nation. I applied and was accepted. At least of all accepted me as an artist on their, um, their program. And so, um, I'll, I'll start a campaign in December. Basically the way that works is, uh, you know, for every person that buys, um, an album. It's I think it's a six-inch um, 
disc and they uh they get one song and i have to physically record each song even if it's the same song Mm -hmm. um so the the recording is unique and personal for each person very cool that's really cool what a neat thing yeah i I don't i don't know that i've heard of that but that's awesome i'll definitely be checking into it now yeah uh well uh, yeah so promote yourself for our audience where can they buy the music where can they find new releases um run us down your uh your online um presence and and so forth yeah you can find my stuff at jamesleebaker.com dot com and uh, the name itself can, can you can find it in most places Facebook I'm on this James Lee Baker Instagram. Uh, and YouTube mm-hmm. uh, on Twitter. It's JL Baker music. Uh, and where you can download it and stream my music from all major outlets, uh, as just search for my name and should be able to find me there. Well, very cool. Well, Hey, uh, James, it was really cool to meet you. Uh, we uh, appreciate you coming on tonight. Absolutely. Uh, this will be, this is actually live. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, I'll, I'll find you actually right now on Twitter. Uh, since you just gave me your name, and we'll add you on there, and you can you can see the links and send that out to your people to hear this and everything. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you again anytime you put something out. Uh, let us know; we'd love to promote you again. And uh, yeah, appreciate you coming on tonight. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you for the opportunity, guys. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, we wish you the best, and uh, we'll be listening. Yeah. Alrighty, thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll see. You. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. So, Derek, that's uh. James Lee Baker. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Different two or two different styles with the acoustic song, and then with that one. But again, I, I liked it. Like I, um, yeah, just a uh, good tone, good tune. You know, um, you know, nice and catchy. Yeah, I thought so too. Uh, yeah. I, that's why, I, like I said, when I heard that first song, I, I really kind of got, uh, I got um, interested. Yeah. from the YouTube video, you should go watch the YouTube videos. It, it really is. I. It's neat that he told the story of the microphone yeah. because it does. Now that he said that, it really does look like when you look at like old cartoons of like Bing Crosby when they were making fun of him with the big ears and everything, yeah, or yeah. just watching old uh, shows of people singing like that where they had the big long microphone stand at the top of it was like a circle. Yeah, remember those? Yeah, oh, yeah. that's what it looks like. Oh, okay. And I didn't really know that that's kind. Of, it was a retro company. But it's a really neat microphone, yeah. uh, and it sounds great. I, I actually wondered if he put a track to the video oh. because he's sitting in front of his computer singing. Yeah, but maybe that really is just how that mic sounds. Yeah. Uh, it was a really cool take of that song. So anyway, very cool. And the upbeat one was good too. Uh, so there he is. Go check him out. Uh, I just added him on our Twitter, um, and so you can catch him, uh, JL Baker Music, at Twitter, and like you said, jamesleebaker.com. Hmm. Derek, let's do a reset. Okay. Why not? Uh, right. We should. We'll yeah. come back, and uh, yeah, we'll find out if we're really aliens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm Nick O'Kelly. I'm Derek Daisy. And we'll be right back. Hey, I'm hungry. I heard Slam and Salmon just opened. Let's go get some. Okay. Hi, I'd like a table for two. You'd like to buy a table or two? We can help you with that. What? Hi, I'm Steve Booger the Third, and we just opened a Slammin' Salmon in town. We've got new bed sets, kitchen sets, and living room sets. Multiple colors, beautiful arrangements. It's so good, it's slamming. Uh, but I'm just in the mood to have some salmon. Well, we're not a restaurant. We're a furniture store. Slammin' Salmon, the best furniture store in the Southeast. But why do you call it Slammin' Salmon? Because every time we make a sale, we smash a salmon's head in with a hammer. Slam it! Bam it! Sit on it! Are you tired of seeing skinny people walk by you and make you feel ugly? Are you tired of wasting away in front of your television, binging on The Office on Netflix for the 37th time? Hi, I'm Derek Childs, president of Fat Picks. I took a serious look at the world and realized that I needed to do something to save it. Skinny people walk around, eat whatever they want, and make fat people feel bad about it because they're more cool and attractive. Well, not anymore, because there are more 
fat people in America than skinny people, it's time we lead the revolution with fat pics. Instead of binging shows, we binge food. Just turn on your streaming box, log in, and instead of watching shows, you pick a delicious tailored meal, and it will be delivered in 29 minutes or less, guaranteed. Not only that, but for a whopping cheap price of $19.99 a month, it's unlimited food. First one to the top is the fattest. <laughs> Here's what some of our customers have to say. Hi, I'm Nico Kelly of To The Echo Radio Show, and I just gotta say, I love fat picks. Oh, so much that I order five or six meals a day consisting of cake, ice cream, sardines, steak, cheeseburgers, and well, that's just my first meal. I love it. I've already gained 122 pounds. My life has been amazing since joining Fat Picks. I work out less, I eat more than I ever have, and I'm doing more harm to the environment with all the gas being used to deliver the food because, hey, global warming isn't real. Not at all. So stop binging movies and binge food today. Fat Picks. We're the Netflix of food. You know, the thing is, <laughs> it's actually a really good idea. Yeah. I think that if they did that, somebody would make a killing. Oh, my God. Uh, I, haven't, I, I forgot <laughs> about that one. Uh, I think I've told you that while we were in Europe, we used um, uh, Foodora a lot. Yeah. The... You know, deliver. They would deliver food to you from other restaurants. Right, right. We did it there mainly because a lot of our favorite restaurants, uh, it was a little strong language barrier. Okay, you know, and they a lot of them only took cash, mm. which you know we had we we would carry it with us because of that a lot. But sometimes we just wanted a good meal, and it was tough. Yeah, if you can't, you know. So, but when we got back. We've tried Uber Eats a couple times, uh-huh. <laughs> which this kind of reminds me of that. Yeah. Like, if you could do that on your TV, that's what it would be, because it, it shows up at your door. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I forgot all about that, man. Like, yeah, uh, that a, was a new commercial yeah. for me, you know? It's a great, it's yeah. a great idea. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. You and I haven't done a lot of commercials lately, because we've, we've shifted We've been doing the skits. skits. Yeah. Well, and actually, a lot of my skits I will do a commercial with. Yeah. The one the other week I did one at the beginning and end. Yeah. Um, but they're kind of a part of the skit, you yeah, know, really. R- right. So, so yeah, I'll have to keep that in mind. I need to go cut those two out. They're in the skit. Yeah. I need to go cut them out and add them as two uh, new commercials because they yeah. were pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, Dang. anyway, uh, we, you know, we have fun. Yeah. We, we, have we, fun. we try. So uh, I've got us a nice little quiz here. I, I love doing these. I'm sorry. I know. Sometimes and they're really stupid. I, sometimes. But uh, every once in a while, I mean, they're always stupid. Yeah. Let me let me rephrase well, that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Thanks. always stupid. Um, always. <laughs> but sometimes I find one that I think is fun. You know, it's kind of funny. Of course. So um, <clears throat> I wish you could see this picture. There's this alien here. But the question is, Yeah. are you actually an alien? I don't know. <laughs> How do you know? Well, I'm going to let you know uh, how that you know. And, uh, well, you know, we're just going to find out here today, both of us together. Okay. I like doing these at the same time. So, all right. Uh, bear with me as I'm clicking on two different pages. But here we go, Derek. 20 Bearing questions. O- 20. Okay. All, all right. right. This all won't right. get us to the end. <laughs> all right. Is it easy for you to relax? Yes or no? No. No? No. Do Why I not? look, do I look relaxed? I don't, I don't know. I, Crippling anxiety? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I I find it easy to relax. I think. No, I I can't. I always have something on my mind. Oh, my question's different. I think they're well. It's the I, I've played this once before. Oh. Um. But okay. I guess they're ordered differently. Okay. That's weird. Okay. So mine is: Have you ever really felt at home? <laughs> uh. Yeah. I mean, hopefully here you do. You pay <laughs> enough for this yeah. damn place. Okay. So we're gonna have different. <laughs> That's Questions fine. We'll, we'll probably times. cross over. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, we'll cross over. I'm fine. sorry. I, no, that's I don't fine, know Nick. That it's All fine. Right, here we Just go. do it. How would you describe your typical mood, Derek? Happy? Angry? Fine? Or confused? <laughs> <laughs> fine. Fine? Okay. Fine. Gosh, you're depressed. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, now I'm going to go on to yours because it, it was just mine. Have you ever really felt at home? Yes or no? Uh... Yeah, yeah, in, okay. my, in my house, All sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, mine is, do you have a rarer blood type? And the answer to that is no. I, I have uh, o-, o positive. Oh. All right. I think I'm O negative. Um, okay, now now it's asking. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to kind of jump That's around. It's fine. It's fine. Mine is, how would you describe your typical, typical mood? I, okay. I, I think I'd say happy. I'm, I'm yeah, you're a pretty, pretty happy pretty guy. happy all the time. Yeah. Derek, is your memory strangely good? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. some, sometimes. Mine is, I remember, is not. You're, you have a terrible memory. I have memory. a terrible memory. God, I remember college. things from like 20 years ago. I know. Your long-term memory yeah. is amazing. Yeah. yeah, but I'll ask you to do something and five minutes later you'll forget. Oh, I, I forgot. Yeah, I'm I serious though. I feel so it's, bad yeah. for Ashley when you get dementia. Oh, she it's, hates it's, it. It's she already hates it. I have dementia now. She hates it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what her name is. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob. No. Um, Keep calling her that tonight. It'll be fine. Derek, do you thrive yeah. under pressure? Yes, yes. No. yes, I do. I think so. I think yeah. it's good. Yeah. All right, mine is your happiest when? Eating? Sleeping? <laughs> Wait, working? I think we already know the answer, Nick. <laughs> working? You fat bastard. <laughs> or swimming? Eat. <laughs> this is for you, right? Yeah. E- yeah, come on, you're eating. Yeah, I, I, oh. I had to think about this, though, like, sleeping, like, I don't... I don't want to admit to that. <laughs> now, you don't like to sleep because you would go to bed a lot earlier and wake up a lot later. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I'm happy working because I have a good job. Yeah. Uh, I'll go with eating. All I, right. I, I, All I, right. I, I think if your wife wasn't here, you'd have a relationship with a ham. Because yeah. <laughs> that's... that's- that's not far from the truth. Maybe a corned beef. Yeah, may, all right. <laughs> all right, Derek. What's the deal with your love life? Uh-oh. Single and loving it. Single and living for it. <laughs> taken. Or who even knows? <laughs> you know, who even knows? Yeah. I, I don't... You know, I mean, what is marriage? Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, uh, okay, mine is... You've always been fascinated with... Cars... The ocean, time, or space? Space. Yeah, You've I'm always a, said gonna, if the I'm aliens came, you'd be like, you'd rip your shirt off and your pants <laughs> off and be like, take me! Absolutely. Derek, do you believe in higher power? No specificity, just do you? Yes. All right, here we go. Yes. Uh, do you have difficulty fitting in with most social groups? Yes or no? Most social groups? <sighs> I mean, if I'm given time, I can fit into anything. No, I don't have any problems. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mine is, do you ever feel lonely even when you're surrounded by others? Yes. I think I have to say yes. I think there's... there's, Yeah, you're lonely all the time. There's times. Yep. I'm lonely. No, okay. Yep. Uh, Do you often lose track of time? Yes or no? No. Yeah. No, I'm pretty time aware. All right. Now you get this quick. Uh, Uh Your happiest win. Okay. Eating, sleeping, working, or swimming? <laughs> I like that throw swimming in there. Like, uh, honestly, out of all those, it used to be eating, yep. but then I was a fat bastard. So now, <laughs> now it's sleeping, so I can sleep through sleeping. this life of misery. <laughs> now that I can't eat. <laughs> Get in my belly. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do it right. anymore. I are can't you, enjoy eating. Are you a proud weirdo? Yes. Okay. Yeah, me too. All right, mine is uh, what inspires you? Love, family, art, or technology? Ooh. I'm going to go with technology. Yeah, that would be mine. Yeah. Okay, uh, Derek, do you get bored easily? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah, I hate Some, that. Sometimes. Uh, mine is are you interested in general wellness? Well, no. yeah. if you look at a mirror, no. <laughs> uh, are you no. double jointed? Me no, yeah, me not neither. at all. Yeah. No. Okay, uh, okay. Now you you've always been fascinated with cars, ocean, space, or time. Uh, time. Yeah that that would be that would be a close second for me for sure. Yeah. I want to time travel, but you know, yeah, I think it, to time travel realistically, if it was ever possible, you probably have to go to space. So. Yeah. Uh, probably. and now mine is: Do you thrive under pressure? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, is my memory strangely good? Uh, no. No, uh, it's okay. strangely terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what inspires you? Art, technology, love, or family? Now, what inspires me more? I mean, technology is really exciting. Um, it doesn't say how, it yeah, is, but just, just I, in general. I might have to go with family because that's why I've lost all this weight. Yeah. It's because of my family. Now we have the same question. Okay. Has anyone ever referred to us, me or you, as awkward? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I think I, today, two or three times, definitely. I was referred to as awkward. Okay, now it's asking yes. me, am I a proud weirdo? Yes. Yes, you uh, are. I am, definitely. Let's see. Uh, and I'm, I'm behind you, so I'm going to get caught up. Uh, am I competitive? Yes. Are you? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Do you have difficulty fitting in with most social groups? 
Yes. Do you? <laughs> well, I mean... I feel like you'd fit in better I than me. I don't man. have difficulty changing myself to fit in, but uh, if I was being myself, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm awkward. Like, me, I don't like social settings in places I, I'm not in, yeah. but, I, but I adapt. That's why I say give me time and I will. Me too. I'm okay. the same way. Well, then, damn it. So, you know, okay. it's just how... No, it, well, now it's, my answer's It's wrong. how we, d- d- you know... Uh, Whatever. You suck. <laughs> Is it easy for me to relax? Yeah, I think so. Am I double jointed? No. Okay, now we're caught up. Okay. All right. Are you interested in general wellness? Gen- yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. Why not? I-, I would say so right now. Do you have a rarer blood type? I think I have O negative. What? It's pretty rare. I, rare. I know anytime yeah. I go in there, they're like, right this way, Mr. Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to donate plasma while you're at it? And I'm like, well, I don't. Do I need plasma? They're like, no, you'll be fine. Yeah, uh, I uh, O positive is not rare. It's yeah. it's 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 in demand because yeah. you know it's the universal constant or whatever. But yeah. uh, it's definitely not rare. But O negative, I think, is. Yeah. All right. Do I believe in a higher power? Yes. Uh, do better. I get bored easily? Because you go to yes. church, I'd be really surprised if you went to church and you didn't believe in the guy <laughs> <laughs> or girl. Uh, do you feel lonely even when you're surrounded by others? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. I think it's pretty, you know, are you competitive? Uh, no, not I I'm not like I'm one of those like, you know, I'm a Steeler fan and last week the Steelers destroyed uh, the yeah. Carolina Panthers. It was a it was a, it it was was a bloodbath. But this yeah. this is what happens. I didn't rub it in people's faces who were Carolina Panther fans like, "Hey, you guys will get it back next I week." I can't even watch them anymore. They're so bad. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, they lost today. Yeah, uh, by one point. <laughs> but anyways, uh, that being said, they're horrible. I but I'm not like so in in terms of competition. I don't. I like competition, but I don't consider myself competitive because I don't take it so bad when I lose. Yeah, you know, I I don't like You're competitive I, with me. I, I well, yeah, but that's but we kind of thrive on it. Yeah, I, I think, think we have fun here. But <laughs> we uh, do. yeah, so no, no, no. Okay. I, I would All say right. no overall. No. Okay. Um. Uh, that was your last question, so we'll get to you in a second. Okay. What's the deal with my love life? I guess I'll go with Taken. And do I, I often lose track of time? Yeah, all the time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Derek. What happens? We have... <laughs> I just forget. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> what time is it? No. Uh, so we have different answers. Okay. I love it. I like this. Our answers weren't that different, so it's interesting. Yeah. I am actually... Hold on. Okay. I am actually... Oh, yeah. Get the drum yeah. roll. I get this. I gotta get. I gotta get this. Uh, get this ready here. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, Derek, I am actually not an alien. Oh, I'm not an alien. Not at all. So uh, how does I am be- not an alien. Like it or not, you are a normie uh. through and through. You were born on this planet and probably will never leave it. Good thing there's plenty <laughs> to see and do on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't read my answer last time. I just uh, went through the questions to make sure they were funny. How, how did how did it feel? It feels horrible. Yeah, I, uh, that you're I'm not very an disappointed in yeah, this answer. I'm really actually. sorry to hear that, brother. Well, Derek, uh, yeah? you know, I you know, we, you never know. Yeah, all right. I know. I already said it's different, but you don't know what the answer is. But right. you actually are an alien wow. indeed yes wow yes. thank you you actually are an alien we got you you're obviously not of this world uh-huh. and you should probably be a little more careful about hiding it you don't necessarily <laughs> fit in uh-huh. uh, but, but but who wants to be normal uh, <laughs> you yeah. weren't born for a boring human life and you certainly won't get one uh, <laughs> all right well that explains it that, so that explains uh, there, the awkwardness. There, there you oh, go. God. Uh, we are evidently very different. Yes. Uh, you are ET. Yeah. That's actually your picture. Wow. And I am some uh, black haired girl that I have no idea who she is. <laughs> I was going to say, you look like a black haired girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So there you go. I'm an alien. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know what you, to do with that I information. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, I didn't. I there, you, there you go. <laughs> no freaking clue, man. None. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, uh, I had a lot of fun tonight talking to James Lee Baker. Yes. And then and, finding and out here. that you're E.T. And hearing a couple good songs from James. And, really good uh, songs. Go check them out. And uh, and then being reminded of some old commercials we made and yeah. I forgot we made. And That's why I think we'll have to do a we'll have to do a, a commentary slash uh, reminiscing yeah. episode. Yeah. One, one of the two. Yeah. And then a Christmas theme yeah. episode. I think that's what we'll do. Okay. Because there's... 
There's several things. There's good. Well, they, yeah. Even if we cut chunks out of each, yeah. you know, something. Yeah. I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure. I, I mean, I, I think we'll. I think we'll. Yeah, it'll be fun. I, I look fun. forward to it. To yeah. look forward to that on the 16th. Uh, we've done our best of shows in the past, but we have not done best of shows live where we're talking. Yeah. In fact, you know what? We'll do both. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say we could do both of them live. Um. Yeah. yeah, why not? Maybe we'll do both live or on the just, 16th. That'll just be yeah. the last episode. Yeah. Just, we won't release it on Wednesday. Just, we'll release two that Sunday night. Or we could just do one two-hour episode and F it. Yeah, um, that, that makes a lot more sense yeah. than what I said. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a two-hour show on December 16th. So I think it's decided. That's half the intros and half the endings. Hey! 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 <laughs> so you get more to the echo for that's the rest right, of the year. That's right. That's so we it. will not release one that Wednesday. That'll just be our last episode, but it'll be two hours yeah. instead of one. Yeah. All cool. right, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah. like I said, uh, I don't know if I said this or not, but next week, Matt Weston, yep. another uh, singer-songwriter. Yep. And then December 2nd, you can look forward to AJ from Disney Food Blog. I'm very excited to talk to her. Yeah. Very, very successful blogger from um, the Disney Universe. Actually, she's uh, got a pretty interesting background, so we'll talk yeah. to her. And December 9th, here in Charleston, we have Holy City Center Magazine that's very, very helpful, an event magazine that we'll talk to Christian, an editor from there. Wonderful. All right, I'm Nico Kelly. And I'm Derek Daisy. We'll see you next time. Bye.